Colleagues, a most cordial welcome to the annual accounts press conference of Porsche AG. We are at the place where tradition and modernity of our company come together, the Porsche Museum. Our first full electric uh, car, sports car, the Porsche Taycan, is with us today, of course. And of course, the setting is slightly different this time, and the reason, of course, is the spread of the coronavirus. As a precaution, we decided to have this press conference as a purely digital one. I would like to send best wishes to all those who have joined us in front of a screen and listen to our stream online. Briefly about the agenda of this press conference, our chairman of the board of management, Mr. Oliver Bloom, is going to give you an overview of the financial year 2019 and also an outlook of the financial year 2020. Afterwards, our Vice Chairman of the Board of Management and CFO, Lutz Meschke, is going to give you the facts and figures in detail. This much from me, and I'll hand over to Mr. Oliver Blume. A warm welcome from me also. I'm delighted that you're here, watching the live stream in front of a monitor in your office or at home. Let me first turn to the topic that is currently dominating our lives, the coronavirus. We at Porsche already set up an interdisciplinary expert group very early on. The members of this group reassess the current situation on a daily basis and decide on the appropriate measures, protecting our employees as the highest priority. Because at Porsche, and you don't know us any differently, people come first. For this reason, we inform our workforce comprehensively about the latest developments and recommended behavior. We already reduced travel activities to practically zero some weeks ago. And all employees who are able to start mobile working on Monday. Meetings are now taking place virtually only or in very small groups. But we have also taken further steps. The daycare centers and schools were closed this week at our sites in Baden-Württemberg and Saxony. The Executive Board and Works Council therefore decided at short notice to give employees who do not have the possibility of mobile working the day off on the first day of closure so that they could organize childcare for the coming period. The pandemic poses enormous challenges for us, which we can overcome only together and with systematic measures. That is why we have decided as the last step for the time being to stop production in Zuffenhausen at Leipzig for two weeks as from Monday. I would like to make it very clear that these are all measures to protect our colleagues and their families. But in this way, we are also meeting our responsibilities towards society. The more consistently we act now, the faster we will overcome the crisis. That is what we now already are preparing for. This much for now of uh, the coronavirus. I would now like to inform you about business development last year. There was a lot going on at Porsche that is also shown by the following film.
Meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, Ladies das Jahr 2019 the year 2019 extrem was extremely eventful. Porsche hat 2019 In 2019, so Porsche, Porsche launched more new products than ever before. Angefangen mit dem It all started with the 911 Cabriolet and the 718T. At the end of 2018, in Los Angeles, we presented the new 911 Coupe. Our timeless sports car is more powerful, faster and more digital than ever before. In March 2019, the open-top variant of the 911 followed with the Cabriolet. The third generation of the Cayenne was uh, presented in March by a new sporty version, the Cayenne Coupe. With its dynamic design and new technical details, it is even more progressive, athletic and emotive. In May, we then presented the 911 Speedster as a series production car. And uh, it is limited to 1,948 units and builds a bridge to our history. A high revving 510 PS 4 liter naturally aspirated boxer engine delivers an emotive sound experience in the cockpit. The six speed GT transmission is shifted manually. We used the occasion of the legendary Festival of Speed in Goodwood to present the new 718 Spider and 718 Cayman GT4, two especially emotive, powerful and purist models. With a spectacular world premiere, we finally presented our first all-electric sports car at the beginning of September. The premiere took place simultaneously in the most important sales markets of the Taycan. The event locations also stood for three forms of sustainable energy. The Niagara Falls in Canada for hydropower, the solar farm near Berlin for solar energy and the wind farm in China for wind power. The live stream broadcast the triple event simultaneously worldwide. The unveiling to the public took place just a few days later at the IAA in Frankfurt. The Taycan links the tradition of our brand to the future. It is a unique package that combines typical Porsche performance, connectivity and full everyday usability. Ultra-modern production methods and the product features of the Taycan also set new standards in the areas of sustainability and digitalization. We celebrated the opening of our new factory for the Taycan in Zuffenhausen with guests from politics, industry and the media. After a construction period of only three years, the vehicles are now built in a factory of the future flexible, networked and with a four-row production technology. It is also a further step towards the zero impact factory, that is to say, production with no negative environmental impact. The Taycan is produced carbon neutral at the production site. Located only around 100 kilometers away from our parent plant at the Hockenheim Ring, we opened the seventh Porsche Experience Center worldwide together with 70,000 visitors in October. The site covers an area of 170,000 square meters and includes a custom experience center, a handling track, dynamic circuits as well as an off-road course. Motorsport is and will remain an integral part of the Porsche brand, and our commitment was rewarded many times last year. In GT Motorsport, 2019 was the most successful year in the history of Porsche. We won all the World Championship titles for professional and amateur drivers in the WEC. Porsche also won all the titles in the important IMSA Racing Championship in North America and in the Intercontinental GT Challenge. After an intensive period of preparation, we entered Formula E in 2019. The team started well in second place. Nevertheless, there is still plenty for Porsche to learn in this purely electric racing 
Championship, which will receive World Championship status in the coming model, year. The 911, we presented the new flagship the model of the 911 series just a few weeks ago with the Turbo S, more powerful, more dynamic and more comfortable than ever before. Its beating heart is a new 3.8-litre boxer engine with an output of 650 PS. This delivers 70 PS more than the predecessor. The sprint from 0 to 100 km per hour is reduced to 7.2 seconds, while the top speed remains unchanged at 330 kph. This much about the key events and new products in 2019. Let us now move on to the economic development of our company. The global automotive market remained below the level of the previous year for the second time running. The market shrank by 4% in 2019. Only new registrations in Europe increased slightly. The market volume in the US remained below the prior year level with 17 million units. The trade dispute with the US affected the Chinese market in particular, where new registrations fell by 6% year on year. The delivery figures of Porsche are all the more pleasing against this background. In the United States, 61,000 vehicles were delivered to customers in 2019, which means 8% more than in the previous year. China again was the individual market with the highest volume. We delivered a total of more than 86,000 vehicles there. The growth was also 8%. In Germany, our home market, we delivered more than 31,000 vehicles. This represents an increase of 15% compared with the previous year. The increase for the Macan was particularly strong at 40% to over 9,000 vehicles. The runner-up was the 911 with 8,300 units. In the year under review, Porsche delivered 280,800 vehicles worldwide in total, the most ever. The growth rate compared with 2018 was 10%. With the launch of the Taycan, 2019 did not just mark the start of a new era for Porsche. It was also economically very successful. In spite of difficult conditions, we succeeded in increasing sales revenue and the operating result before special items to a new record levels. The operating result before special items increased by 3% year on year to 4.4 billion euros, while sales revenue grew by 11% to 28.5 billion euros. Return on sales was 15.4% before special items. This figure was 16.2% in the automotive division. Our five-year balance sheet documents value creating growth. We have increased our vehicle deliveries by more than 50% since 2014. And at the same time, our sales revenue has grown by more than 60% and the operating result also by more than 60%. The average performance of Porsche in the past five years is therefore more than 10% per year. 
Economic success plays an important role. It is the prerequisite for ensuring that we can also meet our responsibilities in the long run. Sustainable actions are part of our basic understanding of ourselves as a company. As an employer, with around 11,000 new jobs in the past five years, and as a taxpayer. Since 2015, Porsche has had a tax expenditure of more than 5 billion euros of taxes on earnings. And on top of this, there are the income taxes paid by the employees in their respective countries. And Porsche is an innovation driver. Since 2015, we have invested around 20 billion euros in future technologies, research and development, and intangible assets. We have reduced the burden on the environment by more than 75% CO2 per vehicle in the last five years, and we are active on behalf of society. We have supported around 450 charitable social projects since 2015. Porsche has also assumed responsibility in the Volkswagen Group for the Sport Luxury brand group with its sister brands Bentley and Bugatti. Bentley has returned to the profit zone with an impressive turnaround and it has increased the operating result by around 350 million euros. I would like to thank the team at Bentley for their strong performance and our colleagues from Porsche who supported them. In this time of transformation, five factors are decisive for success. The right strategy, products that create enthusiasm, innovative strength and a strong brand that is backed up by a strong team. The Porsche strategy acts as a reliable compass for us, flexible enough to adapt itself to the boundary conditions which are changing more and more quickly. And the evolution scientist Charles Darwin already knew how important this is. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. Porsche too is changing and is therefore following the pioneering spirit of the company founder Ferry Porsche. His motivation is our mission today. In the beginning I looked around and could not find quite the car I dreamed of. So I decided to build it myself. And that is also how we are shaping future mobility at Porsche. We are developing from being a manufacturer of exclusive sports cars into a provider of exclusive and sporty mobility. This widened focus will give us space in the future not just to offer vehicles but also all kinds of services for our sports cars. With the Porsche strategy, we have a clear concept with an exact timetable. Combined with the flexibility to question this on a regular basis and change course if necessary. The supporting pillars of this strategy are the brand and product strategy, digital transformation, innovative strength and sustainability. Here we are working with a strategy map with clear milestones and responsibilities. The crucial thing is to fill a strategy with life and bring it to our day-to-day -day operations. Our products are at the heart of our strategy as a key success factor. Our product strategy is built on four pillars. We understand the basis to mean the further development of our core model lines and supplementation of these with suitable derivatives such as the Panamera Sport Turismo or the Cayenne Coupe. Our Image products comprise vehicles that are closely derived from motorsport, such as the GT2, GT3 and GT4. The lifestyle dimension consists of modern sports cars, which we combine with popular elements from previous generations. The 911 Speedster was the first vehicle there. Plug-in hybrids and pure electric vehicles stand for the future, modern, high-performance powertrains with a high level of digitalization. Success factor number three is our innovative strength. Our clear goal is to act as a technology 
technological pioneer. We will invest a total of 10 billion euros in future technologies by 2024 in e-mobility, digitalization, connectivity and new mobility solutions. My colleague Lutz Meschke will deal with this in detail afterwards. Our new products, strategic company orientation and sustainable actions all benefit the brand value, a further important success factor for Porsche in the transformation. In 2019, we saw a significant increase in the brand value rating from the renowned rating agencies. Let us now come to the fifth and last success factor, our employees and the teamwork at Porsche. Our goal to be an excellent employer is on the uppermost level in the Porsche strategy. The fact that we are on the right track here is confirmed by the current ranking of Glassdoor, a leading website for industry-wide employer ratings. Its users chose Porsche as Germany's best employer in 2019, and this across all industries. Well, we do not just want to be an attractive employer for image reasons. We see this as part of our entrepreneurial responsibility. Responsibility and sustainability. These are topics which have strongly influenced social discussions over the course of the last year. However, the concept of sustainability has been firmly anchored at Porsche for a long time already. Ferry Porsche himself always included finite raw materials and energy reserves in his considerations. We take a holistic approach to our entrepreneurial responsibility at Porsche and apply this to economical, ecological and social aspects. We've set ourselves clear goals for continuous improvement of our sustainability performance. We make our results measurable and transparent with our self-developed Porsche Sustainability Index and with a sustainability rating, which specifies sustainability requirements for our suppliers. Last year, we also joined the Value Balancing Alliance in order to standardize the social value contribution of companies across industries and to make this measurable. 6% of global CO2 emissions are caused by individual transport. Innovative technologies are essential to significantly reduce these emissions and to avoid them completely in the foreseeable future. Our drive systems are one of the areas in which we are focusing our efforts. We increase the efficiency of our cars with the internal combustion engines in every generation. We are significantly reducing CO2 emissions with our hybrid models. And Porsche customers can experience carbon neutral driving with our electric vehicles. This three-pronged approach is the correct strategy for the coming years because the markets are developing at different speeds. We simulate the demand for the respective drive type on the basis of specific analysis criteria for all Porsche markets. The result is a so-called heat world map. Let us now look at the worldwide development of the demand for electric vehicles. In 2020, large parts of the world map are still red, the demand is still quite low. A quite different picture develops by 2025, and in 2030, large areas are green with a high market share of electric vehicles. We update this analysis continuously and make strategic product decisions based on it. In order to ensure that the use of electric vehicles is attractive, convenient and climate friendly for customers, we need a charging infrastructure with blanket coverage and the highest possible share of energy from renewable sources. Porsche is therefore making large investments in establishing a high-performance charging network. The Porsche charging service provides customers with access to more than 100,000 AC and DC charging points. With the Porsche destination charging, more than 1,000 AC charging points are available for guests at selected destinations in 20 countries. The network is growing continuously to include further countries and charging points. 
The entire Porsche dealer network will also be equipped with 800 volt high power charging stations. There are also already more than 220 high power charging parks from Ionity in operation on motorways and major traffic routes in Europe, and it is planned to increase this number to around 400 by the end of 2020. Now, what can we do in markets where e mobility infrastructure will not be sufficient in 10 to 15 years? And what about the vehicles? that are already on the road. 70% of all Porsche vehicles ever built are still on the road, and that should remain the case for as long as is possible. For both these questions, we see a possible solution with synthetic fuels, produced from renewable sources using optimized and cost-reduced processes. These fuels can make an important contribution to reducing CO2 emissions, and that not just for new vehicles, but also for existing vehicle pool. In production also, we want to continuously reduce our carbon footprint. The first step here is always to avoid CO2 emissions in the first place. Where they cannot be avoided, we reduce them as far as is possible. Offsetting is the last option. Over the last five years, we have already succeeded in reducing CO2 emissions per vehicle by more than three quarters. Our parent factory in Suffenhausen is already completely carbon neutral in terms of its energy supply. These are important first steps, but there's still plenty of work for us to do in the overall process chain. We also see our sustainable responsibility in the social area. Children and young people are particularly important to us. The newly established Ferry Porsche Stiftung started its work in 2018. It supports projects at our company sites, in the social sector and in the areas of environment, education and science, culture and sport. For Porsche, 2019 was the most successful year in the company's history in a number of ways. Never before, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank all colleagues who made this possible. Never before, Porsche has presented such a variety of new sports car models in a single year. And the undisputed highlight of this product spectacular was the Taycan, 100% electric, 100% sporty, 100% Porsche. And we've made a clear statement in motorsport. Porsche was, is, and will remain at the heart of sports car of our sports car brand with a high power of fascination. Porsche is actively meeting its responsibility for our customers and employees, for the climate and for society. With the strategy 2025, we have implemented a comprehensive sustainability program with the first important successes. The success of the year 2019 is more than just a snapshot in time. It is the provisional high point of success story. Since 2015, we have achieved growth rates of more than 10% year on year. This shows that Porsche is growing continuously, and this in a value-creating and sustainable way. Porsche is a pioneer of sustainable mobility. And Porsche has always been changing. Therefore, Porsche has always remained Porsche. Before I now hand over to my colleague Lutz Meschke, I would like to express my hope that you and your families come through this crisis well, both in terms of health and economically. I wish you all the best and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our challenges in 2019 can in no way compare to the great efforts currently being undertaken by our society and by the economy in order to deal with the coronavirus. Nevertheless, these challenges place great demands on us. The changeover of our sports cars to petrol particulate filters and the new WLTP test cycle represented a noticeable burden on the development of our core business. Above all, the first two quarters, the decision to discontinue models with a diesel engine also made itself felt, even though we have an extremely attractive alternative in our product range in the form of our plug-in hybrids. Nevertheless, we 
took a great step forward in our value-creating course of growth last year, in spite of all the difficult circumstances. So what do our financial figures look like in detail? Let's start with sales revenues. These grew by 10.6% compared with 2018 to 28.5 billion euros, which is a new historic record for Porsche. Above all, this is due to our attractive product portfolio, which has allowed us to inspire our customers all over the world. In 2019, we delivered almost 281,000 sports cars, 10% more than in the previous year. Another new record for Porsche. Our outstanding profitability was also proven once again. We improved the operating result by 2.5% to around 4.4 billion euros. However, I must add at this point that this figure is before taking special items into account. For in 2019, we had a one-off special item that had a noticeable effect on the overall results. Regarding deviations from regulatory requirements on individual models, the Public Prosecutor's Office in Stuttgart issued a penalty notice against Porsche at the beginning of May. This notice provided for a fine amount to 535 million euros. The fine consisted of a penalty amounting to 4 million euros, as well as a levy on economic benefits amounting to 531 million euros. Investigations conducted by the Public Prosecutor's Office showed that there had been negligent breaches of duty in the development department. In the opinion of the state prosecutors, these breaches were some of the reasons why Porsche vehicles deviated from regulatory requirements beginning in the year 2009. Porsche did not appeal against this notice. It is therefore valid and the proceedings have now been concluded. A further important step in order to finally leave the diesel issue behind us. We took the financial effects of the penalty into account in our books in the second quarter of 2019 and included them in the income statement as a profit-reducing item. As a result of the special item, the operating result is reduced by a good half a billion euros to around 3.9 billion euros. This results in a return on sales of around 13.5%. Without special items, the return on sales is around 14-15%. This means that we not only continue to be in the self-defined target corridor of our strategy, we are also still one of the most profitable car manufacturers in the world. As you can see, there was also no change in the excellent profitability of Porsche in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, a significant level of investments in the future also shaped the financial development of Porsche in the year under review. Topics such as sustainability, electromobility and digital transformation are right at the top of the list of priorities for us. That is why we placed a green bond with a volume of 1 billion euros in the middle of August, and this was very successful. We had initially planned a volume of 300 million euros. Due to the enormous demand, we then increased the amount correspondingly. As the first car manufacturer to do so, Porsche has given investors the opportunity to invest their money in a completely sustainable way. The funds raised from this transaction were exclusively used to finance the Taycan vehicle project. The project meets all the requirements of the green bond principles in the category clean transformation. And the green bond from August 2019 is just the start. Porsche is therefore systematically continuing its innovative role in the areas of electromobility and sustainability in its corporate financing structure.
Let us now look at the cost structure. This was again very healthy in the year under review. Porsche has always been characterized by pronounced cost discipline, and we remain true to this principle again in 2019. The investments affecting cash flow for intangible and tangible assets decreased slightly from 2.09 billion euros in the previous year to 2.04 billion euros in 2019. Well, this does not include the accruals for the capitalized development costs. These amounted to almost 950 million euros in 2019, corresponding to a decrease of just under 11 percent compared with 2018. The capitalization ratio was 44 percent in the year under review. In contrast, our personnel expenses increased by almost 400 million euros to around 4 billion euros. The increase by just under 11 percent compared with 2018 2018 is mainly due to the fact that Porsche created more than 3,000 new jobs in the year under review. The Taycan in particular was a main driving force in the creation of new jobs. For this reason, the number of employees was 9.6 percent above the figure in the previous year as at the balance sheet date. Due to the growth in sales, the sales costs increased slightly, but the increase was only very moderate from 1.9 billion euros in 2018 to a now good 2 billion euros. Their share in terms of sales revenue remained constant at 7 percent. We were able to slightly reduce administrative expensive expenses compared with the prior year, as an absolute value from 1.1 billion euros to now 1.03 billion euros, which in relation to revenue is from 4 to 3 percent. This shows how efficient and disciplined we are at Porsche in our business activities. Our cost and balance sheet structure is stable and sustainable. In the automotive division, that is proven, among other things, by our return on investment of 21.2 percent. Porsche generated cash flow from operating activities of just under 4.5 billion euros after 3.8 billion euros in the previous year. In the financial services division, we achieved an equity ratio of 31.8 percent, after 29.4 percent in the previous year. That concludes my overview of the most important key financial figures for the 2019 financial year just ended. You can read the current figures again, broken down in detail, in our annual and sustainability report for 2019. You will also find this online in the Porsche newsroom. Now let me change the perspective by 180 degrees and look forward with you into the future of Porsche. Ladies and gentlemen, we have great respect for the enormous challenges faced by the automotive industry in times of transformation. We will also see a unique opportunity. We understood early on that digitalization will result in far-reaching and extremely fast changes to existing business models. And we, as a company, realized that we also have to change, not just to keep up with the rapid pace of change. Instead, to ensure that Porsche can still remain Porsche, we want to actively contribute to shaping the future. We developed our Porsche strategy 2025 in the year 2015. In it, we established the topic of digitalization as a central cross-cutting issue. Our goal? To transfer the Porsche brand experience into the digital future, thereby creating a benefit for the customer on the one hand and added value for the company on the other. We've created the appropriate structures that will allow us to drive forward the process of digital transformation efficiently and successfully. Our subsidiary, Porsche Digital GmbH, has an important part to play here. It now has more than 130 employees. And during the course of last year, we took steps to implement further strategic, 
organizational and staff improvements in the company. Matthias Ulbrich has been CIO of Porsche AG since autumn 2018. On the 1st of April 2019, he was additionally appointed as CEO of Porsche Digital GmbH. In this way, we are able to promote the close links between Porsche Digital, digital and Porsche AG. We are making great progress in the digital environment, firstly in the area of digital products and services. This action area covers topics such as networking, automated driving and new mobility services. We are currently extending the ecosystem surrounding the Porsche brand. Porsche Digital is also testing completely independent business models. Spectrum here extends well beyond our traditional role as a sports car manufacturer and is also explicitly open for customers of other brands. In the second action area, namely customer relations, we are continuing to expand the digital sales channels. In October, for, for example, we launched a nationwide online sales channel across Germany. This will be rolled out throughout all of Europe during the course of this year. Our customers can then perform all the main steps for purchasing or leasing a vehicle from the comfort of their city or sofa. The new mobility concepts, such as the Porsche Passport Pilot Program, program are another example. Here, customers have access to all Porsche models and can change them as often as they want for a monthly subscription fee. After the launch in Atlanta, we extended the program to four other major cities in North America in 2019, Las Vegas, San Diego, Phoenix and Toronto. And we will continue to grow. In the third action area, we are working on digitalization of our company processes. This involves the continuing rollout of the digital workplace and the automation of work processes as part of Production 4.0. In this context, we also founded the joint venture Flex Factory. This develops highly flexible digital concepts for the economically efficient production of small series. Alongside our management and IT consulting firm MHP, the Porsche partner here is the reinsurance company Munich Re. We see great potential in the cross-industry bundling of risk management expertise together with software skills and production, production know-how. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2015, we also started looking very intensively into the topic of venture capital. Since then, we have established close links with the most important players in this area, in collaboration with well-known venture capital funds and through direct investments. The worldwide focus regions of the activities of Porsche Ventures are Europe, the United States, Israel and China. We have currently already invested in 16 startups. We have seven holdings in venture capital funds. And together with Axel Springer Digital Ventures, we are taking young startups to the next level of their development in our accelerator APX in Berlin. In 2019, we invested in the Pforzheim based software specialist CETITEC and the Israeli startup Tri I, among others. And we increased our holding in the Croatian electric powertrain specialist Remac to 15.5%. And in the current financial year, also, we have already made two new investments, namely in the Hamburg software startup Nitrobox and in the Silicon Valley company DSP Concept. Strategic investments in newly established innovative companies and startups provide us with access to new trends, technologies, competencies and business models, for which we are investing up to 150 million euros per year. In addition to these investments, we are also entering into strategic corporations. One example is our partnership with Boeing in the area of premium urban air mobility. In October, we also announced an alliance with SAP. Together, we want to develop new solutions for the digital transformation. The strategic partnership will focus on data-driven business models, artificial intelligence and a software architecture driven by end 2 end processes.
It is absolutely clear to us, ladies and gentlemen, that the automotive industry must invest massively in the future. Companies that neglect to do so today will be left behind in the future. Porsche has therefore again significantly increased its investments in the future. By the year 2024, we will invest in a total of 10 billion euros in e-mobility and the digitalization of our vehicles. That is equivalent to half of our planned total investments for the next five years. The investment total of 10 billion euros is made up as follows. 60% will go into the hybridization and electrification of our vehicles. We will further develop the Taycan, and in 2022, the Macan will follow with an all-electric drive. We will spend 3 billion euros on investments in tangible assets in the context of e-mobility. This includes the new buildings necessary for the production of electric vehicles, as well as further expansion of the charging infrastructure. 1 billion euros will go to investments in digitalization topics such as connected car, triple E architecture, highly automated driving and new mobility offerings. But that is by no means all. There are also annual budgets totaling 900 million euros for the digitalization of processes, customer relations and services. In short, by 2024, we will invest a total of around 15 billion euros in e-mobility and in the digitalization of Porsche. That is a huge financial effort that we have to make. We will therefore continue to keep a close eye on our costs. And at the same time, we must develop new sources of revenue. We are completely on track with our profitability program. The potentials that we have set out to achieve for 2025 are already in the books. We will achieve our goals and also overcome the current challenges with a high level of discipline on the cost side, along with creativity about how we generate new income. I am firmly convinced about that. But what we also need, and with we, I do not just mean Porsche alone, but the automotive industry as a whole, as a one of Germany's key industries, we need framework conditions that that allow us to successfully further develop our business. Let us take the 5G network as an example. Germany is unfortunately still trailing well behind here. When it comes to establishing powerful digital mobile networks, we need to move at a much faster pace in our country. The whole world is already talking about fully networked vehicles, autonomous driving and digital production processes. But it will not be possible to realize all this without a high-performance digital infrastructure. We are more than willing to make our our contribution here. Porsche has decided to set up its own 5G campus networks at some German locations, including our headquarters in Zuffenhausen. The networks will already be launched this year, but that can only be a first step. We need full 5G coverage along motorways and major roads. However, 5G is not the only topic that concerns me. The global economy already became no noticeably less dynamic at the end of the last year. That is due not least to the creation of trade barriers. The year 2020 has started off with a real shock. The coronavirus pandemic has resulted in a very strong slowdown in the global economy. This hits the international automotive industry right in the middle of a challenging phase of transformation. And that the force that no one would have thought possible. We are still not able to foresee when the global pandemic will smooth out, but one thing is already certain today. It will have far-reaching economic consequences. Share prices have collapsed globally, as demand has for cars, and in many places, production is slowing down. 
The government and has responded with financial and economic measures. It is to be hoped that these measures will take effect quickly. But I am definitely convinced that when the economy starts moving forwards, this is not the first crisis we have to weather. And I can say we uh, will always have been the stronger after such a crisis. Therefore, it will be the same after this crisis. And in China, our colleagues try to bring about normalization again, and this again corroborates my optimism. I wish you and your families that you come through the current crisis well, both in terms of your health and economically. Thank you very much and all the best to you. Thank you very much, uh, Lutz Meschke and Oliver Blume, for your detailed presentations. Well, colleagues, uh, the Porsche Newsroom now has uh, available the key contents of this annual accounts press conference. And there you will also find our uh, annual re accounts and sustainability reports as, as PDF files available for download. And you will also see a microsite for many additional functions. We have made available videos, uh, photo series and audio files and surely about our most recent model, the 9-11 S. And this brings us to the end of our press conference. I would like to thank you very much for watching. And, uh, I will say see you next time and enjoy good health.